Hi guys, um, apologies for not making any videos in a few weeks. I've been really, really busy at work and just so tired, just not had any time really. Anyway, I've got a few additions to my setup. I've got the Rigel DS1054Z oscilloscope. I've also done the modification that you're probably aware that you can do, which unlocks all the extra features like the decoding of I2C, etc. And also boosted up to uh, the 50. Make, uh, sorry, 100 megahertz instead of the 50 megahertz bandwidth. Also got a power supply, obviously not top end, but I got the uh, if you pronounce it Tenma. Uh, it's the 72-10480. Uh, uh, not too bad supply. I didn't opt for the. It's only the um, 30 volts, so it goes at 31 volts and 3.1 amps. You can get a version that goes up to 5 amps, and they also do one that's programmable through the computer but I didn't really bother with that. Um, I think there's quite a few videos already on this power supply so I'm not too sure if, if you guys want to know anything about it I'll shoot a video otherwise you'll probably see it in videos but I, I shan't do a dedicated video about it. What I was going to talk about today was this little gizmo. This is one of those solar powered battery packs for charging anything from USB. Picked this one up at uh, Lidl's I think it was £7.99. So I thought, well, for that price, best get it. So we'll go down to the bench and we'll have a look at it. Okay, then, so this is the device. It's branded Silver Crest, but as we know, with anything you get from Lidl's or Aldi's, you tend to get uh, random branding on it. I know they do quite a few garden stuff, and that's um, branded Flora Best, which sounds more like a tub of margarine to me. Anyway, back onto this device. Right. 2200 milliamp hours. I'm not sure yet. I've only tested it once, and uh, that I got about one and a half, uh, so 1500 milliamp hours out of it. So I doubt it lives up to that. 3.7 volts, that's the battery. Input 5 volts, 500 milliamps. Output 5 volts, 1 amp. So manufactured in Germany. Now, the biggest problem I have with this at the minute, and that's probably down to the capacity, is its weight. I do wish I had some scales here. Um, it just there's no weight at all in it. It just feels so so light. Uh, it doesn't really aid the you sort of you know how how good you feel about the unit really. Build wise, it's it's quite secure. It doesn't seem to flex too much. It's got a kind of the it's got that kind of plastic with that slightly rubbery feel to it along the back. It's got these mounting posts. Now if I can find it. It came with these brackets here. You get two of these, so you can put that on the wall and then sort of slot your device in if you want to store it like that. I can't really see the point, to be honest with you. Uh, you also get these little suction mounts, sorry. And uh, again, that's so that you can sort of put these in the back of it. They're sort of popping up there like that. Get four of those and then you can sort of suction it down to something. I guess you could use that in your car if you sort of, you know, if your dashboard's smooth enough, you could you could stick it onto the dashboard, then it would always get some sun from there. Now, I've not really had much chance to uh, to charge it with the uh, with the sun yet. It's not been the best of, best of weather, really, and uh, most of the time I've been out of work, so if I leave it in one place, it, it sort of lights up red to say it's charging, and then, of course, the sun moves, and that's the end of that. But it will charge off, you know, you can charge it from your computer or something there. It comes with a cable, just, you know, you know standard USB to, to micro USB, uh, which you can use. On and off button, when you turn it on, you get your lights light up, so we've got two bars at the minute. And that's it really, it doesn't do, um, it hasn't got any light or anything like that on it, just basic solar charger. So we get the uh, power meter and uh, plug this one in. As we can see on that, we're getting 4.94 volts. So you probably can't see that. Yeah, it's gone out now to 5.12. It does have this weird issue. Sometimes if you, if you don't turn it on there, then you basically seem to get the battery voltage directly on here. It doesn't always do it, but sometimes it will. It did it yesterday. So I plugged it in and it came up with the um, 
3.7 volts, so it's just sort of giving you the output directly from the battery, but not actually with presumably the boost circuitry that runs when that's switched on. Yeah, see, now it's going off with that. Uh, right then, so rated for 1 amp, so plug in the cable. I haven't got my phone, I'll tell you what, I use the sat nav, I don't know how much that draws. I did try it with the uh, e-sig and that seemed to draw about 800 uh, milliamps out of it, so that's not too bad. So that's drawing... Oh, not, where are we? Nothing at the minute. Come on to that. I think it's gone off in its standby mode. Yeah, so that's drawing 360 milliamps at the moment. So I don't know if it will do an amp fully. I will need to get a um, one of those dummy loads, USB dummy loads, I think, to uh, to check that one. I changed the phone recently, and it's got the USB Type C connection on it, and I've got a lead for that standard USB, uh, but I keep that one in the car, so I might get another lead because that will probably definitely draw up to an amp at least, and we can see. Uh, if it would draw any, if it was capable of supplying that. Now I don't know. I'm tempted to try and take this thing apart, but the only way I can see is it's got these bits on the edge. Are they stuck on? Ah, yes. Here we are, stuck on with some uh, with some glue and some screws underneath there. So I think. Oh dear, had it a minute ago, didn't I? I'll try again. I'll do. I'll get the um, the hot air gun on this just to heat the glue up. It'd be a tiny bit easier to peel those off. We can see what's in it. See if the battery that's in it is actually um, says what was it, 2,200 milliamp hours. So it's a shame that the battery is 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 quite a low capacity really, and it would have been nicer to see sort of well at least 5,000 milliamp hours, if not 10,000. But you, you kind of get that as soon as you pick it up. It's just so lightweight. But again, for the price, it's eight pounds. It's not not too bad. And most of the stuff you get from Lidl's, and that seems to be reasonably good quality. Whether or not I'll get these strips back on, so I've peeled off a bit of glue there. And then we got one this side. So yeah, like I say, I've been really, uh, really busy at work. It's been keeping me occupied. Often not getting in until later in the evening. It's just been so difficult to uh, to find the time really to do do any videos. But as it's a bank holiday, I thought I'd get some bits done on the car and uh, get this video here done. All right, so that's got those off, and let's see if we can uh, these screws out. I'm hoping that it's not actually held in with loads of clips as well, because that would be a tad annoying. Unusual location for the screws, bearing in mind that it doesn't open, you know, the seam is around the back. I think with most of these things, the effectiveness of the, the solar panel is you know, really not that great. It'd be interesting to, I'll, I'll probably stick it in the car at some point when I'm at work, so it'd be interesting to see if I run it sort of right down, you know, a sort of day sitting in the car with the sun on it most of the time, you know, what, you know, how much are we likely to uh, to gain in, in battery on that. So it's probably slightly more gimmicky that you have the, uh, you have the solar panel. So that's got that apart, so let's see if we can... Rise this thing open. Oh yes, yeah, here we are. Comes off of it. And then same this side. Too bad actually for so far anyway. Now is that clip together as well? Yep, 
seems to be. Now, I don't particularly want to break this one because I'd like to uh, like to make use of it if I can. My other really nice one has uh, come to the end of its life, unfortunately. It wasn't a solar powered one, but it was 10,000 odd milliamp hours. Well, rated it wasn't. Didn't ever provide that about 5,000. So. Here we are on the inside, let me zoom in a bit so we can have a closer look. Okay, so as you can see we've got the battery mounted in here and our main board here. Let's have a look and see what's on this board. What have we got? Have we got any numbers on these chips? Just bear with me. Now that main chip there is completely blank. The other one has actually got something on it. Let's see if I can get it on here. Probably you might be able to make that out. It's quite difficult to make out, but that one has actually got a marking on it. Uh, what have we got? S14600 or 606. I think so. If you want to uh, look that up, look that one up yourself. By all means, go ahead. I expect it would just be one of the uh, battery charging uh, control chips you get. Probably with a built-in uh, battery protection as well. And quality of the board doesn't look too bad. I'm not particularly over worried about anything on that. They've uh, they've gunked down all the uh, connectors there stop them coming loose. They've not done it brilliantly to be honest with you but they, they have made an attempt anyway so that's uh, better than nothing. Now see if there's anything on this battery. Get this off. Uh, here we are. So Livium Polymer. Sheng Hang. New power technology. Well that instills a lot of confidence doesn't it? So the model of that one we've got SH35609OPL. That does say 2200 milliamp hours, 8.14 watt hours. Date code on that, so that would be either January 2006 or first week of 2000, 2016, sorry. So that's pretty good. That's um, I don't know if you saw um, Julian Alette's video recently on the battery powered lawnmower and the battery pack on that he took apart and that had I think it was even more recent than this for its uh, date code. So certainly they they they're out got out quite quickly after the uh, batteries have been manufactured. So that's that's quite hope, hope helpful and, and hopeful in a way that you know this battery pack should last a fair odd time. That's good. It's got a battery protection board on the battery pack as well as you control circuitry and probably a protection on that chip there as well. Now, I don't know what the, say I haven't got any sun at the minute, so to tell you what the voltage that the solar panel gives out. Uh, so the battery connections are going over here, solar panel ones are going over here. So whether or not it's a, it's a five volt panel or 3.7 volts. I guess is as good as mine on that one. Uh, if we get a nice sunny day, I'll have to uh, to test that out. But I think, all in all, it's not too bad. I think, in a way, with the size of the case, they certainly because they've got this massive foam pad there just to put a bit, of, you know, keep the battery in place. I think they could have certainly put a bigger battery in. I suppose it wouldn't be impossible if I could find another battery this size and about the same. Actually there's loads of room because they've got more foam pads underneath that battery as well, so on top of the solar panel. So you can certainly, you know, can't see why you couldn't put another battery in there to add a bit to its uh, capacitor. The only thing I had one when I first used it, I put it on to charge the uh, eSIG. I left it on overnight. And the battery had full capacity and it all seems to be going okay, and then when I woke up in the morning, it's not clipping together ideally that one. Yeah, I woke up in the morning, I had a look at it, and um, yeah, the battery pack was completely and utterly dead, but so was the e <laughs> So I'm not really sure what, 
what happened there. I don't know if that was a fault of the uh, battery pack or a fault of the the e-cig. But yeah, it just seemed like drain the power from the battery pack and then the battery pack drain the power from the e-cig and it just sort of vanished. <laughs> a bit strange really. So hopefully this will uh, go back together okay. I'm just hoping I can get those little side strips on that just cover up the screws. Just make it a little bit look a little bit neater. But so far, actually, I'm more impressed with the construction of this than the uh, the other big one I had that was um, from the Porter Power people. And uh, yeah, that one took it apart, and you end up inevitably that you either break one of the clips or one of the clips just never quite clips in again. And that's it. It's nice to see you know a combination of clips and uh, screws in it. So all in all, I'm quite pleased with that. On a side note, I had to redo the parking sensors in my car. Uh, they weren't ones that came with it, they're ones that I fitted. It's one of those kits that's got the uh, transmitter and the it transmits wirelessly, you've got the receiver, little display unit, but that was nine, ten months old, maybe? Maybe eleven months, certainly not more than a year, and that, uh, that failed, it started going cuckoo. The funny thing is it failed after I was fiddling around behind the radio where the wiring was. But I had the power off at the time, and uh, yeah, so I was, you know, a bit disappointed that it, it sort of died on me. Um, luckily enough, the the sensors in the bumper were fine, so I I just replaced the unit with a new one, and just left the sensors as they were. But yeah, I might have to uh, have a look at that, take it apart, and just see if there's any anything obvious. Sorry, off camera again. Anything obvious as to what? Uh, what caused that to fail? It was just kind of you know you you'd be up against you know reversing up to something and it would it would start beeping but it was kind of beeping in a way that it was kind of like it was straining like the beeper wasn't getting enough power and it was just really struggling to to display anything on the screen so it wouldn't surprise me if it was just something actually in the uh, in the receiver display unit that's caused a uh, power issue with it. I thought I'm not going to fiddle with it. I'll just uh, just replace it. It was 15 quid or something to replace the set. So I'm just applying a bit of heat to these strips just to help stick them down again, so they're hopefully back more or less as they were. So yeah, reasonable build quality. It'd be interesting to know if the solar panel does actually have any effects or not. I should certainly uh, test that out and. Uh, if it turns out to be any good, I'll report back. Or in the same way, if it turns out to be completely pointless having a solar panel, then I'll report back as well. But I think if you look at a lot of Martin Lawton stuff, you know, a lot of the times the solar panels don't really have much effect. It's just more gimmicky. But it would be useful if they work really well, because, you know, if you're sort of away or something, camping even, that sort of thing, useful way of charging your battery pack so you've got a bit of power. Yeah, it's gone back together reasonably well. That one's not quite perfect at that end, but it's not too bad. And importantly, does it still work? Well, the lights come on, so that's a good thing. So yeah, four blue lights, obviously if you're power, you've got little light comes on when you're charging something. I don't really see the point, I suppose, just in case you don't realise you've got something plugged into it. And the solar one lights up red. I don't know why they've got blue for everything else but red for the solar. Uh, I think the blue one also lights up if you plug it in to charge, if I remember correctly. Ah oh, no, sorry, that just lights up those ones there. So yeah, that's a general overview and quick teardown of the Silvercrest solar powered battery bank from Lidl's. Like all these things, by the time you go to Lidl's, they probably won't have them anymore because they change their stock every week. Anyway, hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. It all helps, and uh, catch you soon for the next video. Cheers.